Let's take a look at some of the questions to checkpoint test um, two. In question two, we are asked to solve for the variable and we are asked to round off to one decimal place where necessary. And from your knowledge of quadratic equations, we know that we only need to round off if we've used the formula. So just always be aware that if things don't factorize, you can use your quadratic formula to solve. So we're going to take a look at question 2b. Let's start off by arranging it into standard form. So 2r times r is 2r squared. 2r times 6 is negative 12r. And the factors of 2 and the factors of 3, doesn't matter how you arrange them, even if you um, multiply the 2 by the 3, you simply do not get big enough numbers to give you 12 in the middle. So that means that you are going to need to use your formula. So r will be equal to negative b, b is 12 in this case, plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4 times a times c, all over 2a. And we can actually, sorry, substitute a for 2 in the denominator. And if you punch that into your calculator and convert it to a decimal, you will get r to be 5,7, or you get r to be 0,3. Just remember that when you punch it into your calculator, you first do the positive option and then the negative option, and remember that you must work out the whole of the numerator first before you divide by 4. If you just punch into your calculator 12 plus, that's, so that square root actually simplifies into 2 square root 30 divided by 4. If you punch it in just like that, your calculator actually works this part of the sum out first because your calculator does bod mass. So just remember that you must tell your calculator to calculate that part of the sum first and then divide the answer by 4. Otherwise, you will not get the correct solutions. Okay, question 2c. Square root of 3d minus 8 minus d plus 2. The moment we have a square root, we need to solve by squaring both sides but we can only square both sides when the square root is on its own on one side of the equation. So we first need to get the d and the 2 across to the other side. Now we can square both sides. Remember that d minus 2 all squared means d minus 2 times d minus 2. So you have to do foils and you get d squared minus, d minus 4d plus 4. If we now get that into standard form, negative 4 minus 3d is negative 7d and 4 plus 8 is positive 12. So that means it factorizes into d minus 3, d minus 4, so therefore d is 3 or d is 4. Now, whenever you solve a quadratic equation by squaring, you must check your solutions. So you must substitute 3 in place of d and check that your answer is 0, and you must substitute 4 in place of d and check that your answer is 0. And in fact, for both of these solutions, that is correct. So both of those are valid solutions to the equation. Okay, and finally, let's take a look at question 4. Show that 3 over 2x squared is equal to negative a half x plus 3 has real, irrational, and unequal roots. So they are asking you to show what the roots of this equation is like. So this is a nature of roots question. We are not solving this equation. We are not asked to find out what the actual x values are. We are just asked to show that its roots are real, irrational, and unequal. So the first thing we do is we need to get this into standard form because we need to be able to identify our a, b, and c values because for a nature of roots question, we use the discriminant in order to tell us what the roots will be like. So the value of b is a half a is 3 over 2, c is negative 3, and if you calculate that, you get the value to be 73 over 4. So, therefore, what can we say about delta? We can say that it's positive. We can say that the square root of delta, if we were to find the square root of 73 over 4, it's not a perfect square. So, therefore, the square root of delta is part of the irrational numbers. So, therefore, the roots are real, because the moment delta is positive, the roots are real. Because delta is irrational, the square root of delta is irrational, we know that the roots will be irrational. And because delta is not actually equal to zero, it means that the roots will be unequal.